Hi, my name is Cindy. Welcome to another rabbit hole edition of my vlog. If you notice, I am wearing glasses. I never had them in my previous vlog so far. I have a LASIK consultation on Monday, which I'm hoping I'm a candidate. That'd be really awesome. I am something you might not know is I'm legally blind and I do not get 2020 vision in glasses anymore, so I would really love to be a candidate and it's been a crappy two days wearing these glasses so far, so I can't, this is the only time in my life I'll pay for a Monday, so. My blog today is actually going to be focused on my father. My father passed away in March of last year, but the, like I said, my rabbit hole blogs are either going to be on a certain mental health topic, a person, or something I think that should be brought to attention, and this time I'm going to talk about him. If you want to see what my father looks like, this is an old picture, but this, I'm trying to make sure there's not a glare, this is actually my father. This is his basic training military photo. Unfortunately, I am not getting a good glare or a picture of him, but this is him. I will try to post it later in the thing, but this is my father. People say I look just like him. Unfortunately, you can't see it, but I'll see if I can get it a little later in the vlog. The reason I want to talk about him is my father, if... Some people in my family see this, or some people who are friends on my Facebook, I post this blog on my Facebook to see this. My father um, was schizophrenic. We found this out a lot later in his life. And um, I just want to talk about it because schizophrenia is not something that a lot of people have, and it comes up, sometimes it does come up later. So I'm actually going to see if this will work. So much better so this is what my father looks like a lot of people say I look just like him and this is actually a really good picture of him this was his basic training military photo he was in the Air Force so it's I'm really proud of him he was in the Air Force during Vietnam so that is his photo just so you can kind of see what he looks like the reason like I said the reason I want to talk about is schizophrenia is something that's not really talked about and I just want to talk about a little bit of history of him and things like that and kind of share my story with him for people in my life that don't know about it because it's not something I talk about often. So my parents got divorced when I was four. My father was a big part of my life and for a big chunk of it. Like I was a daddy's little girl. I loved my dad. My dad was really tall. That's where I get my height from. And he is still what was one of the only people that ever made me feel really short. I felt like a little person next to him. So I always like him. Like, is this how everyone feels around me? He was always different. And I even knew that as a kid that he was different. But I loved him to death. He gave me so many things in this world that I love. And I'm going to say all that stuff now because I think it's super important to say because I don't want anything else I say in this vlog to diminish what a wonderful person that I think he was, no matter what happened in this world, that because of my father, I extremely love Thunderstorm. We used to sit outside. <laughs> Yeah, we were kind of weird when it was raining and we would just watch storms go by. He said it was calming and it actually is very calming to me to sit outside. He got that love when he was in the military. He was initially stationed in Greenland and then he was stationed in Myrtle Beach. So he had this really love of the ocean and storms and I really love them too. He gave me a love of records and old music. So some of my favorite music is the Beach Boys and the Drifters and the old Motown music. He gave me that love very much. 
he also gave me a love of beer. So that's why I'm wearing a shirt that says this girl needs a beer. There's no shame in that. <laughs> he also gave me a like just a love of old movies. We used to watch like comedy and horror movies. And I don't know why I said old movies, but just comedy and horror movies. I get, that's where I got my love of horror movies. My mom used to get so mad at him for letting me watch them. But that's fine, because now I watch them all the time. <laughs> but he was just... Sorry, it's raining out and I just heard it. Very weird. So when I was younger, he, he just was kind of this person that kind of stuck to himself a lot. And they ended up getting divorced because my parents just shouldn't have been married. They had their own issues. That's not a place for this blog, honestly. But they had their own issues, and that was for them. And they got divorced, and I used to go see him on the weekends. And my father was the type of person, he had a mental illness at a time where you didn't talk about it and you didn't get help and you didn't there was nothing you did about it so I know he self-medicated he drank a lot and unfortunately he used to take me with him to bars when I was a kid and that's essentially why I stopped seeing him when I was about a teenager and he would he would make broken promises to me say he was gonna come see me wouldn't come see me, was going to come pick me up, wouldn't come pick me up. So there was things like that that happened between us in, our, in my life. And when I was a junior in high school, we got a call that he was taking Valium. The VA hospital gave him anything he wanted, which is very irresponsible, but would give him anything he wanted. And he drove his car into the doors of the McCormick place downtown. Not very smart, but they took him to Mercy Hospital in the city downtown and he became a ward of the state. And he stayed in this place next to Cook County Jail called California Gardens and he was there for a very long time. And I used to go see him randomly down there. It was really rough to get over like some of the stuff that happened growing up, but I would go see him he's still my dad and I wanted a relationship with him and I went down there a lot and I was put as his next of kin and that's when he finally got diagnosed with schizophrenic because when my mom and brother went to go clean up his house they found he had stuff all over the place he was peeing in bottles there was all these things that he was doing he had numerous suicide attempts before getting put in there so we, we knew there was something going on. Um, we just didn't know how bad it was because schizophrenia is a pretty serious disease and he probably sh he should have been diagnosed a lot earlier than in his like 50s. <laughs> so obviously there should my because my father had me later in life. So he shouldn't they should have known something earlier. So he was there for a very long time and it's kind of weird because I'm not religious. But I got a weird call in the middle. I had this weird feeling, a weird dream. I call my mom and I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to work, but can you call the facility and see what's going on with dad? She called and he wasn't there. So I spent a year trying to find my father and I could not find him at all. So what ended up happening is about a year ago, well, I shouldn't say a year ago because he died over a year ago, about, I don't even know the time frame. So he died in March of last year or the year before that. So before that, we got a call from Cook County Morgue that, he was sitting in their freezer and did we want to claim his body 
and everything. So my brother got this call. And this was in July. And we were very shocked to get this phone call because I was already trying to find him. And I did like internet searches to death. And I found his address in like San Antonio, Texas. Like I was about to board a plane to San Antonio to go find him. And I found, so basically then the day we found out he got really sick at California. He was at California Gardens. They transferred him to Christ Community's hospitals, nursing home ward. He got really sick there with COPD. He ended up going into the emergency room and he died in the emergency room. They try to claim, they um, try to find us. I hate to say this, but I call total BS on this whole story that they try to find us because I have a, my maiden name is super unique. There's only three people in this whole country that have it. That would be my dad, my brother, and myself. That unique. Three people. Three. So I call BS. They try to find us. Especially since um, if I Google search my name now, I could find myself. My maiden name. I'm the only person that comes up. So hard to believe. But so we ended up not claiming his body under the pure circumstances that um, the VA buried him. Then, so he is buried in a military cemetery now and everything, but the whole situation is just very upsetting to me because no one deserves to die alone in a hospital. No one deserves to deal with a mental health condition for so many years and not get diagnosed and have the VA ignore them. No one deserves these things. I don't care what you did in your life. And especially someone who gave me my life, basically, who's half of me. So I don't agree with the system. I think we have a super broken system in this country when it comes to so many things. And I'm not blasting anything on our veterans system. They do a lot of great things, but I think there's a lot of things that are broken. So this blog is not to rant at them at all. I'm just very upset that my father could be transferred all around under the guise of that he's a ward of the state, even though his sister is next to Kim. Like, I don't get how any of these things happen. He sh struggled, obviously, and he had family that cared about him. Because at the end of the day, no matter what you do, you're still blood with those people. And we still cared. And I just don't understand it. Why? At the end of the day, even with all the things that happened with my parents, my father was the type of person who would tell me that he loved my mother. That even though they got divorced, it's because it didn't work out. They shouldn't have been married, but he loved her. He gave her, gave him two beautiful children. And even though he was the type of person that probably shouldn't have had children because he did not know how to be a dad. It, and I'm sure part of that goes to the fact that his own father passed away when he was eight years old from a massive heart attack. I'm sure that had a lot to do with it. But he was never the type of person to talk ill of anyone in front of me. He was never the type of person to sit there and bash people. He was just the type of person that wanted to sit there and enjoy the things that were around him. He's a minimalist. He really didn't have a lot of stuff. He was just the type of person that was there and went with the flow. He had his demons. He had a condition that obviously people missed. And as I, to this day, still say I want to find out what happened, how he got jumbled around. I'm hitting, I hit a, I've been hitting dead ends everywhere I go. But this, all I have to say is, if you feel like something is wrong, if you feel like someone around you is something wrong, 
or even in general, just go talk to someone because it's so sad that the, there's people that never could come forward, never could talk, never wanted to um, get things checked or looked at because of the system being the way it was for so long. Um, I'll eventually do a blog on my stepfather. He kind of had a similar situation, but his was to a crazier degree, I feel, than my dad's. So if anyone wanted to know the story of my dad, this was part of it. But like I said, he was just never diagnosed. And I feel like if he was diagnosed, a lot of things in his life probably would have turned out differently. Who knows, maybe my parents' relationship would have worked out Maybe they would have never met. Like, who knows? And you don't want, ever want to live your life and coulda, shoulda, woulda, did it happen. But it's always better to get help than not get help. So just want to say I hope all of you have a great evening, day, afternoon, whenever you do watch this. So like I said, this is a little bit into the life of my dad and... Peace out.